Electric cars are perfect and everybody loves them and wants one. Wait, what's that? Rubbish, get that out of here. Anyway, as I was saying, wait, what? Stop, no. No, stop it, you're ruining the video. Stop with all this rubbish, oh my God. Yeah, no, what a load of rubbish. Hey everyone, I'm Ben and welcome back to Ben Goes Electric. Now I've driven EVs for the last five years few different models over the time and now to this lovely Tesla Model 3 and over that time I've heard so many myths from flat batteries the EV is going to explode and they're dangerous and oh they're very bad for the environment but they're all myths all absolute rubbish and in this video we're going to take the top 10 EV myths you've probably heard and we're going to bust them and show you that EV ownership is easy cheap simple and the way to go into the future So let's get into that with the first myth being... Myth 1. EVs don't have enough range. Now this one you hear quite a lot. Range. And it's weird, it's important. And I get that. Most new EVs now have over 300 miles claimed range and in UK conditions we're looking at around about 250 miles. And for context, most of UK driving journeys are under 100 miles anyway. So most driving you can do in one charge in EVs and for your longer ones, of course, you've got the vast charging network to use as well. And when you think you're commuting each day is around 20 miles, you can charge your car overnight and wake up every day to a full tank of electricity. I charge my car around once a week and that's only really because I film for you guys and I'm doing more driving than your average person. You might be looking at charging once every two weeks, for an example. And if you can do that at home, how easy is that? So EVs, they do have the range. And the truth is, unless you're driving from London to Inverness, range isn't really a problem or a big deal. Now that's about range. What about... Myth two, charging takes forever. This one, it's everywhere. So let's have a look at it. For me, I charge overnight. Like most UK EV owners, it's a passive refueling now. You plug in when you get home and you wake up in the morning and you've got a complete full tank of electricity, as we'll call it. So it's not really, time is not the issue with that one because you're not wasting any time. On longer trips, your rapid chargers can add 200 miles of range in around about 15 minutes, which is pretty fast. You've probably waited in a McDonald's drive through longer than you have having to charge an EV. And those 15 minutes, you're not stood there with the EV charging cable next to your car like you would with a fuel car. You're doing other things. You're going to the toilet, you're eating, you're sleeping, whatever. So again, they may take longer than fueling a car in five minutes. And I get that. There's no way of getting away from that. But that time is not being used or wasted. You're doing other things. And the only time EVs charge slow is if you're using an old three pin cable or granny charger and yes it could take over a day to charge but again overnight it's no time wasted at all so yes charging can be slow but you're not waiting on the car the car is waiting for you let's move on to this one now because i've seen this a lot and it's weird myth three the grid can't handle it now this one is a classy if everyone gets an ev the lights are going to go out the grid can't handle it so looking at some context, the UK government has even claimed that EVs kind of charging is predictable. Everyone's doing under 100 miles a day and charging at night. They know when the spikes and the lower parts of the grid are going to be. That's what's important with a grid, it's the spikes which can cause issues. But like I said, people are going to be charging their EVs overnight when demand is low anyway. So that capacity is already there available just not being used the national grid has also even said that if everyone switched to an electric car tomorrow the actual increased demand would only be 10 percent that's nothing and they're investing all the time and upgrading the grid non-stop and they will meet this demand which is slowly coming on again not everyone's going to get an electric car suddenly it's going to be a slow incremental progress up towards that mandate as we call it at 2030 when in the uk all new cars need to be 
electric. You've even got some smart home chargers now, which will actually add power to your car when the energy demands are lower and will stop charging your car when there's a spike in power. Again, just to kind of flatline the grid's demands. There's loads of technologies out there to help this issue slash myth. So no, just because your neighbor's plugged in their electric car doesn't mean your lights are going to go off. The grid will be fine. How about this one? This one's hard to explain. Myth four, EVs are worse for the environment. Now, yes, building an EV has more emissions than building a petrol car, and that's mainly down to the battery. We can't get away from that. The rare earth elements in the battery, there's not much you can kind of do about that. But at around 10,000, 15,000 miles in your car, that is fully offset. And then for the rest of the journey, you're creating a lot less CO2 than petrol cars. They continue to pollute the more and more you use them. EVs don't, there's no waste from them. Another thing about the battery is when they've gone, they've reached the uh, end of the life cycle in the car, what happens then? They can now be recycled and they're getting better and better all the time. EV batteries are now being used in smart home batteries so you can power your home if the grid goes off, for an example. So the battery and those rare earth elements are being recycled, reused, they're not going to waste. So again, that lowers the initial CO2 cost even more. So no, EVs aren't perfect and they're not 100% green, but they are definitely getting better and greener and you should definitely get one. Now we just talked about batteries not lasting. So what about this myth that you'll hear a lot? Myth five, batteries don't last. Now, people think EV batteries are like smartphone batteries, that they're going to die very quickly and you'll have to get a new one in a couple of years. Well, that's not the case at all. These batteries are built to last. Let's take my car, this Tesla, for an example. After 100,000 miles, the battery still retains 85 to 90% of its original capacity. That is crazy, 100,000 miles in a car. It's not an easy feat to do, especially in the UK here and you've only lost between 10 to 15% of the original size. So you're only probably losing a couple, a couple, what, 20, 30 miles maybe of range from brand new, that's nothing. And like I've said, battery technology is still improving. We've got kind of ba better battery management technologies and cooling systems. And again, the recycling of these batteries. So in the future, when they do lose most of the capacity in the car, and we're talking, God, looking at around about 10 years probably worth of driving, they can then still be used in powering your home or even bigger kind of grid battery storage technologies. So again, EV batteries don't just die on their own. The EV battery will probably outlast the car and you're more likely to get a new car because of the normal car needs and wants rather than the battery dying. So if you see this myth, ignore it. It's just clickbait. They don't just die. Now here's one you'll see in the news on social media quite a lot. Myth six, EVs catch fire easily. Now the media love this one. EV bursts into flames and firefighters couldn't help the owner. EVs can catch fire. Petrol cars can catch fire. Diesel cars can catch fire. Of course, hybrid cars also. Cars will catch on fire. It's a fact, it's a sad fact. But statistically looking at, Petrol and diesel cars are more likely to catch fire than EVs. Again, look at it. Petrol is flammable. You drive around with a flammable liquid in your car. Of course it's going to catch fire. So when you see the EVs on fire and it's all dangerous, yes, it is dangerous. Because an EV fire is different than a petrol fire. It has to be handled differently. But firefighters are trained a lot better now on how to handle EV fires. So it's not a complete death trap. At the end of the day, petrol and diesel's a bit more of a death trap than this EV. So unless you're planning on driving through a fireworks factory, you're going to be fine. Your car's not just going to catch on fire because it's an EV. Moving on to myth number seven now, which is... Myth seven. EVs are too expensive. Yes, it's true. We can't get away from the fact that EVs are expensive compared to the petrol and diesel counterparts. The upfront cost, you're looking at anywhere between five to 10,000 more than the respective petrol version. This is mostly down to the cost of the battery. The battery is the biggest expense when building an EV 
and at the moment we can't get around about that the price is coming down and eventually we're going to meet that part where petrol and evs are the same price and then it comes down to the actual running cost of the car and that's an interesting one now i've broken down my 10,000 miles in this car in another video click above to watch that video not now watch it after this one and as you can see in that owning an ev is cheap maintenance is low you've not got all the engine parts and the gubbins to deal with all i've got to do in this car is change my washer fluid and my wipers like any car charging we'll come back to charging later but charging can be cheap at home overnight you're paying around about three four pounds for a full tank of electricity now there are still some hidden costs with ev for an example if it's your first ev you've got to think of how you're going to charge it at home you're probably going to have to buy a home charger for an example but there are some schemes to help you on that as well but overall evs over time are going to be cheaper to run than petrol cars and to get away from the upfront costs, the used market for EVs is booming. You can get some great deals out there. You can get cars like this, Tesla Model 3s, for around about 15 to 20,000 pounds. And when you're comparing that to a brand new Corsa, for example, around 30,000 pounds, you can get a slightly used electric car and it'll be cheaper and it'll save you money in the long run. Our next myth is... Myth eight, you can't go on road trips. Now, if you know this channel, I've done countless road trips across the country. You can look at the link in the description here for my playlist of my road trips. And honestly, I think it's so much better than a road trip in a petrol car. Like I mentioned with range, you can do around about 200, 250 miles before even thinking about stopping. And that might be enough for your road trip. But if it's a not, you've then got to stop, of course. But that stop is going to be a great chance to stretch your legs, get a bite to eat, go to the toilet. Normal things you would do anyway. Road trips, you would stop in your petrol and diesel car. I don't want to hear the whole, I can do 800 miles non-stop rubbish. Most people stop. Motorway service stations are busy at the end of the day. People stop and have a rest. And while you stop there, you can use the rapid expanding UK public charging network from the likes of Tesla, Supercharging, GridServe, Ionity, Shell Recharge for a, a few examples. And when you use them, charging is pretty easy. Plug the cable in, tap your contactless card, and it'll start charging. Press a button and it will stop. Easy. It's not all that old faff and rubbish that you probably have seen in the past. It's improving, it's easier, and charging just becomes one of those natural things that you'll do on a longer trip. Most cars today will now even tell you where to stop, how long for. Taking that planning side out of, and it's as simple as putting your route in on the screen and driving there. Again, things have come a long way from the earlier days where charging was scarce. There was only one or two and you'd be queuing. That's not what it's like. You turn up to charging stations now, there's plenty available and they're easy and fast to use. Road trips and EVs are a breeze. Don't worry about that. You can still do your road trips in your brand new EV. Myth nine, EVs can't tow or handle bad weather. Now here's a fun one. I've heard a few times, you can't tow in an EV and EVs don't work very well in the rain and bad weather. Now that one is a complete load of rubbish. EVs can tow, this car can tow. You've got Kia EV6 and EV9s, the Ionities. They can tow up to, you know, some of them up to 2000 kilograms. Perfect for your caravans, etc. Now, yes, they will lose a little bit of range, like petrol cars and diesel cars would anyway, but they can still tow and they do it very, very well. So when driving in bad weather, EVs with their low center of gravity and their instant torque, they handle very well in snow and rain, a lot better than a front wheel drive petrol car would anyway. And when it comes down to kind of efficiency, now, yes, when it's cold, when it's raining, snowy, you will get less range, but you will in any car, not just EVs, every car will have less range in the colder winter months. But the issue with EVs is you're sat there looking at your range going down or it just depleting massively. That's where this whole, they don't drive very well or can't handle the bad weather thing comes from. 
Whereas in a petrol car, you don't worry about that because you can top up in about five minutes. So you're looking in the winter, you're probably going to lose around about 30%, depending on the car, of your range you would in the summer. So you've got to think about that a little bit more. You're probably going to be charging a little bit more. But it's not a matter thing to worry about at the end of the day. Like I've said, in petrol and diesel cars, they're exact same. And for our last myth today... Myth 10. EVs are boring to drive. Now, if you think EVs are dull and boring to drive, then you've never experienced one, you've never driven one. Because when you do, your mind will change completely. With that instant torque and pickup, you've got crazy 0 to 60 times. Like in this car, a 4.2 seconds feels like a breeze. You've got the performance versions of these cars as well, which can do it in just over two seconds. They are fast, they are fun. But going in a straight line is only one part of the story. With their low centre of gravity, steering around the bends, the cars don't lean as much. They are very fun to drive. So if you think otherwise, get yourself a test drive and experience an EV because a lot of them are very, very fun. You've also got nice quiet cabins, minimal noise. And some people, I get like that vroom noise of a proper car, proper engine. I don't care. I don't, I don't miss it. Some cars will even make their own virtual noises, like the Abarth 500e, for an example, has um, sounds coming out of the speakers and outside as well to make it mimic kind of an engine. So you've got choices out there if you're going to miss that kind of grunt from your old engine, but it will still be a fun car to drive, believe me. So whether it's a Model 3 or a Mini Electric, they are smooth, fast and fun to drive. Believe me, I've never had more fun driving a car than I have in this one. And there you have it, guys. 10 of the biggest EV myths busted. Now, EVs aren't perfect, but never were smartphones when they came in in around 2007. But they are improving. We've got more exciting things on the way. Things like solid-state battery packs to give you ranges of over a 1,000 miles. One megawatt charging, so you can charge the car in around about three to four minutes. It's crazy. And for most drivers, they're cleaner and cheaper and more enjoyable to live with than a petrol car. So what's making you not want to switch just yet? Let me know in the comments for the reason why you don't think an EV is for you. Now, if you want to see some more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe because we've got some exciting videos coming up on this channel. Of course, don't forget to like this video and comment as well. Much appreciated, guys. Thank you for watching this EV Myths. Hopefully we'll come back with some more in the future. Again, if you'd like to see that, let us know. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.